Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson for today. Lesson number 10, February 7, 2021. Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 45 Church Street, Peterman, Tunnel Springs, Alabama, 36471, 251-564-2171 is our telephone number. The church where everybody is somebody and Christ is the head. Reverend William Oliver is our pastor, Sister Joyce Oliver is our first lady, our clerk is Miss Lisa Starworth. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning, scheduling normally at 9.30 a.m., but since COVID-19 for the past several months, we have been broadcasting from our um, studios here in uh, Beatrice, Alabama at 231 6th Avenue, I'll see radio. Um, we are also uh, do our services posted on the Facebook as well as our church website. We uh, have worship service on 2nd, 4th, and 5th Sundays, normally at 11 a.m., but uh, since COVID-19 virus, we have been doing it from 8.30 a.m. at the church there uh, in the parking lot or virtually from the pulpit with Pastor Reverend Oliver and um, our musician, Corey Robinson, broadcasting. We thank you all for joining us. Let us go to the throne. Our Father and Savior, Jesus Christ, the maker and creator of all things, thank you, Jesus, O merciful God, for the conditions in which we are living in here on this earth. As you prepare us for a better place, thank you for our trials and tribulations and all that we're going through and all that are around us and all our loved ones and those that are in our midst that we have an opportunity to interact with you as you would have us have interact as Christians. We thank you for this church, Antioch Baptist Church. We thank for our pastor, Sister Oliver, all of our church members. We thank you, Jesus, for all that are around us, our friends and foe alike. We thank you for our witnessing of the COVID-19 virus, the death in our midst, knowing that if Jesus tarry, we too shall go that way, Jesus. We thank you. Be with us as we prowl and toil here for this government, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for knowing that there are some people in this world, including us perhaps, that does not have the right understanding about what we should be doing here. But our job is to love and care and to worship you and to uphold your holy name, to carry your word, to teach your word, and live Christ-like. We thank you for that. We thank you for all that are listening, continuing to listen and worship as you have given us the opportunity to worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Be with us today as we toil with this lesson to give this word as you have led us to speak and teach from the Sunday School lesson. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Be with us and guide us if it be thy will. These are many blessings we ask in our Son, Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, good lesson for today, No Significant Witnesses. This is from uh, February the 7th, uh, the second month, uh, called to testify. Our devotional reading going to come from John, the first chapter, 37th through the 51st verse. Our background scripture going to come from John, the first chapter, 37th through 51st verse, the fourth chapter, 25th through the 42nd verse. Our key verse for today, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did, John 4:39. 39. Um, the new IV version is many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Significant point there. God knows everything that we do and will do. Our big subject, no significant witnesses and call to testify. As exhaustively experienced in this lesson, the participants should be able to do these things. Identify the barriers, Jesus' cross, and conversing with the Samaritans. 
Today we are going to be focusing on the issue of racism, one of them, the sense that wonder the Samaritan woman felt in her encounter with Jesus, because the Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. The Samaritans were considered to be half-breeds. We may be thinking, for example, our um, President Barack Obama was a um, mulatto, a mixed black and a mixed white. Um, in other words, his father, a black man, his woman, his mother, a white woman. A mix, a what is commonly known in the 18th and 17th and 18th century as a mulatto. Share with others the transforming power of God's work in their lives. You should be able to share the transforming power of God at work in your life. Key terms for today would be the word city, the inhabitants of a city. Another word, uh, come, come hither, hither, an explanatory word, image come to. Disciples, uh, learners, a pupil. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you a disciple of whoever you are studying? but a disciple. Uh, Jesus had 12 disciples. The next word is finish, to bring an end, to complete, uh, complete perfect. How many jobs have you finished? How many jobs have you started and not finished? It is good to finish something. Seek, to seek, search for desire, require, demand. All right. Are you seeking Jesus? Are you seeking righteousness? Are you seeking to love and care for your fellow man? What are you seeking? Who are you seeking to help? All right, let's go with uh, speaking, to tell, to talk, to say, to utter. We are speaking today to you for the lesson. Why this lesson matters? Some people, some people wonder if they are good enough to give direction to others. Some feel that their past disqualifies them from being effective in serving God, while others hesitate because of their fear of uncertainty about how to share the gospel or witness to others. Is there a right way to share the gospel or to witness God's unfaltering love and unmerited favor? The woman at the well was just an everyday woman in Samaria, but after meeting Jesus, she became an eagle witness and brought others to Jesus. The lesson in focus. The lesson in focus. We often judge people on the basic of their background, reputation, or skills. Except the Lord, however, knowing all things, does not always see as we see. We look on the outward appearance, but God is able to look beyond the presence to see the end from the beginning. He knows the outcome of uh, every scenario. God looks beyond the things that others see and see the heart. See 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. He knows a person's potential. When Jesus made plans to minister to souls in Samaria, he used one woman, perhaps one that others would have overlooked for the task. Knowing her heart and how she would respond to his message, Jesus arranged an encounter with her at a public well that resulted in many Samaritans not only coming to hear him, but also being drawn to discipleship. Never underestimate the power of one, one person, one effort, one witness for the Lord. You may not consider yourself to be a great teacher, preacher, or evangelist, but God is able to use Whatever influence or gifts or persuasion and communication you may have to touch lives and win souls for the kingdom. The lesson in context. Jesus made the promise of living water in his tabernacle. This course, see John the seventh chapter, thirty seventh through thirty ninth verse. It is possible that for some hearers the mention of living waters recalled the story of Moses calling for waters to flow from a rock to satisfy the thirst of the Israelites in the wilderness en route to the promised land. That's in Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. 
As a Samaritan, the woman at the well might have been familiar with the stories from the Pentateuch regarding Moses and the wilderness journey. Jesus knew the long history of cultural tension and theological differences between Jews and Samaritans. Remembering note that we talked briefly in, in the for a minute about racism, how the Jews and Samaritans did not mix, and the Jews had against the Samaritans because they were a mix. But more than that, he knew that when hearts and minds were ripe and ready to receive the good news of the gospel, he compared those who were ready to hear the gospel to a field of ripe grain. See John, the fourth chapter, the 35th through the 38th verse. His world parallel, his words parallel, paralleled his message to disciples prior to their first independent ministry mission. See Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 35th through 38th. Significant, Jesus' encounter with the women and the well marked the first time he would reveal himself to anyone as the Messiah. See Matthew, the 16th chapter, 13 through the 20th verse. How, how have you ever felt that your testimony was not interesting or significant? Have you ever felt unworthy to share the gospel because of your past or present shortcomings? How can personal inadequacies or failures contribute to a powerful testimony? All right, let's look at the insights. Let's look at the insights for this lesson. Every believer is called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ every chance we get. The truth, however, is that most believers feel intimidated when uh, they feel intimidated when when sharing the gospel. Um, one of the reasons why people are uncomfortable with witnessing is that they don't know enough scripture. They feel being judged as fanatical, too righteous, or hypocritical, not righteous enough. Are they afraid of coming across a judgmental to the unsaved? Feel of coming across as judgmental to the unsaved. The key is to rely on directions and strength of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all evangelistic efforts. Having a sincere desire for others to be saved is the first step of effective witnessing. You have to want it in your heart to go for Jesus Christ. Along we may not evangelize the masses, but none of us know how many wonderful blessings can result from sharing the gospel to just one, to just one lost soul. All right, the expiration. The exploration. Jesus went to teach lost souls in a place that was shunned and avoided by other Jews. Guess what that reason was? Racism. Differences in Jews and Samaritans. Jews thought they were pure, thought the Samaritans were unpure, were of a mixed race. If we are going to follow his example of loving others, too, we must be willing to reach out and communicate freely with those whom others may reject. What about the atmosphere that is here today? Think about this for a moment. Think about this for just for a moment. What is taking place in this country right now that allows some people to believe that they are somehow better and different than others? Think about the presidential race. Think about the folks that are voting. Think about what is going on in America today. Think about COVID-19. How many of you are willing, how many of you are willing to go to a COVID-19 patient? How many of you are willing to go to a, a white person that is not in your neighborhood, that you're not familiar with? How many of you are willing to go to a black person that is in your neighborhood and that you are not familiar with? How many of you are willing to cross the line of indifference, a difference people to carry the word of God? A note for you. But we must be willing to do whatever God requires to share the gospel and engage others with our own testament of what God has done for us. Never forget that Jesus accepted you with all your flaws and shortcomings. You do have flaws and shortcomings. We have all fallen short of the grace of God. Whatever your testimony, gifts, strengths, or weakness, God can use you to touch someone's life, to touch someone's life and draw him or her to the kingdom. 
Let's go for the first commentary today. This is John as we turn to.